Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm Ian. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review Aguirre, The Wrath of God, directed by Werner Herzog in 1972. Mm. Ian, the synopsis. Well, we follow a Spanish expedition heading into the Amazon searching for the lost city of gold, El Dorado. The film is narrated to us from the diary excerpts of a monk who was part of the group. One of the characters inside the group, Aguirre, uh, takes control of the group and decides that he's going to conquer the Amazon himself. The film opens up with, as you've said, a narration from this monk who is saying that these events have happened and this yeah. has led them to this point here. And so you're already straight away being told this sort of factual history. Yeah, yeah. Which, we'll just break that spell right now. Werner Herzog went on to say that there is no historical factual evidence to suggest that anything in this film actually happened. Yeah. He just added that at the beginning to lend some credence to the story that was about to follow. And of course, that sort of style of filmmaking is still going on today. Yeah. Based on a true story, based on actual events. Yeah. It's uh, actually looking into the history of it. A lot of these characters did exist. Yeah, but most of them were actually dead by the time this film had actually started. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. historically. But I mean, you know, the the monk actually did live as, uh, at some point, and Egede, played by Klaus Kinski, is noted as being a symbol of cruelty and treachery in colonial Spanish America. This guy, this guy. This guy makes the guy from Ghostbusters 2 look like a fucking babysitter. You know, he he went around. <laughs> this isn't in the film. This guy, this Aguirre went around and just decided to attack Spanish towns and colonies and, you know, wanted to conquer the world himself. And I'm like, damn. Wenn ich Aguirre will, dass die Vögel tot von den Bäumen fallen, dann fallen die Vögel tot von den Bäumen herunter. Ich bin der Zorn Gottes. Die Erde, über die ich gehe, sieht mich und bebt. Yeah, there's very clear signs that this man was fundamentally insane. Yeah. And this film is pretty much a journey, or, or rather a descent into insanity yeah, yeah. as it goes. At the beginning of the film, we're watching hundreds of these Spanish uh, conquistadors yeah. traveling down this mountain, and we can see that they have... Uh, several slaves with them, and they're all Indian slaves, which they've captured and using them to do all this hard labor. Yeah, yeah. But it looks like hard labor on all of them. <laughs> but I, I suppose you can especially see the plight that the Indians are in when they're struggling to hold this carriage to keep this woman sort of stable inside. Yeah. And of course, you get Aguirre, who just grabs these slaves and is just forcing them around. It was just like, okay, so. Th these opening shots are setting the scene yeah. for for these characters and the environment that they're in, but I don't think the Amazon junk. I don't think any of them were actually prepared for what perils they were going to face in this this jungle. Yeah, I mean the director didn't have the budget to pay for stunt doubles. Well, the budget I think was three hundred and seventy thousand dollars, and you remember this is the nineteen seventies as well. Yeah. So when you are seeing these people in the mountains, those are the actors. He is he has got the actors and the crew and and just everybody to walk up a mountain so then he can film them walking back down it again. I'm like that's dedication. You know that I this the, the, it was the second time I watched this film for the review. The first time I watched it I sat down and I was just like okay, you know, we're going to be reviewing this at some point so I might as well get into it. And I I had the complete wrong idea of how this film was going to turn out. For some reason, I had Cannibal Holocaust in my head. And I, that's how I pictured the film was going to be. But as the film started to unfold, I realized I had no clue really what to expect. Well, I got a very Apocalypse Now feeling from the film. Yeah, I got that the uh, second time. Matched equally with perhaps Moby Dick. Because yeah. Aguirre sort of, for me, was, was a crazy Captain Ahab yeah. who... Ahab wants his whale, Aguirre wants El Dorado, and wants the City of Gold. Yeah. And they will do anything and get uh, go through anybody in order to make this happen. Ich folge Osur. Hinrichten. 
Yeah, uh, as they as they travel down, as they travel deeper into the jungle, they realise that the terrain is is treacherous and they they just cannot carry the cannons. They are carrying cannons through the jungle. And I'm like, I'm like what, what, the, what the hell are you going to take on in the jungle that you're going to need a cannon? But they're like, well, you know, we'd just like to be prepared. And and half, just into the beginning of the film, half the group gets sent off home. And the other half with Aguirre and the other leader, I can't remember well, the leader's they, name. They, he, he takes control of the group and they have to carry on further down the river. And that river was just dangerous. Auf der anderen Seite des Flusses ist eines unserer Flöße in einen Strudel geraten. Wir hörten nicht, was sie riefen und konnten nicht helfen. I would not go on that river even now, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, as they build what three or four rafts and there's about 10 on each of them so they send a team of 40 and this is to be the expedition team yeah. to go and scout out for information or food or get any information and then bring it back yeah but once they go on this expedition and they they go down that river for however for a day or two yeah yeah and it, it's soon after that uh, uh, Aguirre pretty much says yeah, you know, we're not going to go back. No. We're not going to go back and give some information. We're actually just, what's left of us, we're going to go and, and get this gold. But he's not actually in charge at no. this point. Yeah. Somebody else is, and he is the one who's like, you know, he's more civil, if you will. Yeah, And yeah. he also has his wife that's with him, and he's like, no, we're, we're going to go back. And that leads to the confrontation where Gire, uh or one of his goons, yeah. just shoots him at point-blank range. And this sort of causes um, the treachery and the uh, treason, if you will, that, that's about to unfold, where there is a, a small sort of gun shootout. Another one gets killed when he stands up for the other person that's been shot. Yeah. But it's eventually the, the rebels in this group sort of take over the entire company and decide that they're going to carry on down the river to get this gold. This is the brilliant thing I find as well, is that I, I always grew up with the, you know, the myth of El Dorado, the land of gold and all that kind of stuff. But it tells you right at the beginning of the film that when the Spanish conquistadors conquered S South America, the, the, the tribes that they took over and, and the kings and, and, and tribesmen that they took as prisoners made up the lie of El Dorado. So when people heard, oh, there's a land of gold, we've got to go find it. The Indians must have been sat there going, you're all going to die and we don't <laughs> give a shit. And I'm like, <laughs> and, and I really get that idea. When, when they set up on these rafts and they start going down the jungle, there are just some shots that I'm like, you guys have no idea what you're getting into. You are unaware of the perils that are going to come along. We know nowadays that the the, the jungle is treacherous. You know, you need all these different medical shots. There's animals you cannot touch. You know, there are traps and, you know, you could be lost for days. These guys have none of that. And they're going down there. And I'm like, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> well, the film is beautifully shot. And, and the scenes of them going down the river on those rafts are, are breathtaking. Yeah. And... You feel the peril of their of their journey when one of the rafts sort of veers off towards the center of the river into the right yeah. and actually gets stuck in a whirlpool. Yeah. And you see the others that are sort of beached on the other side are just kind of trying to hear their shouting and their screaming. And they, they are battling the current and this whirlpool all day and all night. You yeah. can hear the men screaming and shouting over there until there's gunshots. Um when when the following morning is there and you see the raft and you see all the bodies there, I was just like, damn, did they all just commit suicide because of the predicament that they were in? They were going to get no help at all? No, I think they were actually attacked. But it turns out they were actually attacked by the native Indians in this jungle. Yeah. And some of them have actually escaped. And that there is then the beginning tension for the rest of the film because the rest of the film is them on that river. Yeah. They don't they deviate occasionally when they find dry land that they can come onto. Yeah. But for the rest of the film, they are going down this river. And every so often the the survivors of this expedition are getting picked off by stray darts, stray arrows and stray spears. Yeah. They're just picking them off one by one until the number dwindles down and dwindles down. There's an important scene also at this point where this band of conquistador rebels 
need a new emperor that, that, that they can have when they have Eldorado they need a new emperor to, to govern the lands yeah. so they're like yeah it's going to be you Take and here is the decree we'll just make this completely legal that we're all a bunch of bastards take the chair there's your steel of approval it's been ordained by, by a priest and uh, he just sits there and starts crying. Yeah. <laughs> just like, you are, you are the king and all this land is yours. Alles Land hier zu unserer Linken und alles Land zur Rechten gehört von nun an uns. What, the curtains? Ich nehme feierlich und förmlich Besitz von all diesem Land. Great. <laughs> I've got to bring up right now Klaus Kinski as Aguirre is it's, he's a phenomenal actor. I mean, this is the first first and only film I've seen him portrayed in. But he is menacing and he just has this look about him, even when he's just in the background. Even though Klaus Kinski was kind of the main character for a lot of the film, he is just in the background and everybody else is talking around him, doing all their stuff. He's always observing what's going on. Yeah, yeah. but he's just got this look and you, you can just see that his mind is functioning on a, on a level other than everybody else because he's like, you know what, you, you guys make your plan and then I'm going to screw you over. And I'm like, that is, you just get that from the look. You know, he just he just appears in the background. Like we said, he he turns against the leader of the expedition every, any uh, anyway, and you know has the has the leader shot, and so everybody else is like, right, we're going to follow Aguirre, you know, because we don't want to die. But then as the as they get further and further down the river, you know, they then start to realize, hold on a minute, he actually doesn't know what he's doing, or if he does know what he's doing. It's just for him. The rest of us are just expendable. So then they start actually planning to turn against him. And then they end up getting killed as well. So the numbers just start more and more dwindling and dwindling. And what I love as well is the fact that the director filmed the film chronologically. So from the start all the way to the end, that is how they filmed. And you can just see the degradation and just the, just the plight on the faces of the actors that where they're just like, we are sick and tired of making this film. And then he records the scene and they're just like, we're sick and tired of sitting on this river. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because when you get towards the last scene and uh, Aguirre has, has reached the, the zenith of his insanity, if yeah. you will. And he wanted to, in his final scenes, Klaus Kinski just wanted to go apeshit crazy and just be shouting at the at the clouds and at the trees and at the men and at the raft and at the monkeys. <laughs> he just wanted to be just this vengeful spirit, just just alive with energy. Yeah. Um, but Werner was just like, no, 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 no. You need to be totally focused and calm for yeah. this effect to work. And of course, it's pretty much legendary how uh, how these two people, Werner Herzog and um, Klaus Kinski. Klaus Kinski were at each other's, were at, at ends with each other the entire time of this production. Yeah. To the point where Klaus Kinski wanted to leave the set. He was yeah. like, I'm done with this film. And Werner Herzog pulled, apparently pulled a gun on him <laughs> and told him, you leave this set and I will kill you. And then I will kill myself. That's so that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, you hear reports nowadays of actors flying off the handle and storming off sets and things like that. These these nowadays actors are nothing compared to Klaus Kinski. I mean, I was reading up references where the director would purposely get Kinski infuriated. Sie müssen bei mir lernen! Nein, natürlich lerne ich nicht. Sie sind ein Anfänger! 
I swear to you, Roger Sherwood, you have at least Roger for me. Completely send him over the fucking edge in anger, and then wait until the tantrum had burned itself out, and then go, film. <laughs> So that by the time he had burned out, it actually gave the performance that yeah. Werner wanted and the film sort of needs. Yeah, definitely. I mean, without without Kinski's Agide, this I don't think that this film would work as well as it does. It does work on a... It's like we said before we started filming. It's very documentary style. Yes. You know, you are... You are following these people down. You watch down the river. You're watching their 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 life force drain out of them as the film carries on. You know, but it just works so well because every now and again you have this stunning performance from Klaus Kinski, and you're just like, he's the reason why you're all in the position you are, and you followed him willingly. It's ah, oh, it's amazing. <laughs> now I just want to bring up a few things. Usually, a film like this is is pretty serious. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know whether it's just me and my dark sense of humour, but I found this film sort of, perhaps, unintentionally quite hilarious. I found myself laughing pretty much through the entire film. <laughs> now, I, I understand the gravity of the situation that they're in is, is deadly serious, yeah. and... And the plight that they go through and the descent into insanity is captured spectacularly. However, some of the things that are going on around this are, are very, very odd and, and very strange. Um, we start off with uh, Aguirre when he's, when he's uh, starting to go insane. He, he declares to, to his entire group that if anybody else decides that they want to abandon ship uh, or, or be a traitor, yeah. he will cut them up into over 150 pieces, stomp them into the ground, and then paint the walls with their blood. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, there's not even, there's no walls in the forest. It's going to paint the trees, but why specifically that many parts? I, I don't know. Um, and just before that, he's just decapitated a man <laughs> yeah. who who was plotting against him. And the after he's been decapitated, the head sort of rolls away and lands, and then finishes counting. Eight, nine, ten. These are funny moments that are probably not meant to at the time, but right now they're hilarious. I go bring up that bit where they they have they have a, a, a black man with them, you know, and it, it, it's documented that they they took this Negro as a slave, but they purposely sent him on this expedition because the Indians are afraid of horses. So if they're afraid of horses, then they must be scared shitless by a black man. So they strip the black man. <laughs> And force him in front of them as they charge an empty village. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you could be confused and think you're watching a, um, an unreleased Monty Python film. <laughs> you really could. Uh, but I don't want to slight the film for no, this. No, no. Because like I said, you might not specifically be aware of how perhaps funny some of these scenes are. There's a scene early on where they, they've, um, they've turned traitor and the person that they shot who was leading the group is still alive and so they're sort of having a, a trial, if you will. Yeah. And uh, the new governor is sat there and he's not, he's not really too fussed about this. He doesn't really want to kill this other person. No. Um, but this other person's wife steps up and is like, look, we've paid our slaves always. We've been paying our slaves while we're here. It's just what we do. It's just how this, this system works. And the priest just says, Wir verstehen deine Verwirrung gut, mein Kind. Du bist entschuldigt. It's okay, lady. You sit down. I understand you're confused. It's just like, <laughs> damn. There's another scene where they're, they're going down going down the river and this uh, they, they, know, they notice a canoe coming towards them. Oh, the canoe. And scene. so you get these, these uh, two Indians that come on board and they have a little bit of a conversation. But there's one of the, one of the background uh, extras on the raft is just like, raw fish. Mensch, is ein fish. Just like, damn, I know they were hungry, but... I, I love the bit where they've, uh, they've entered into the village and they're licking salt off, off the, the floor <laughs> because they haven't had salt for a month. And I'm just like... Okay, you're you're really you're really losing it at this point. The the canoe scene, I 
I got to bring up the canoe scene. Religion has always kind of sat ill with me throughout my life. And this scene kind of proves that by the fact that they bring these two these two Inca Indians on, on board and you know they're 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 trying to talk to them about where they can find food and where El Dorado is and they realize that this guy has a tiny bit of gold so they snatch it from him and the, the monk is stood there going oh you know i have a bible i am bringing the word of god to your you know your tribal village because obviously you're heathens and you've been living in blasphemy for god knows how many generations blah 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 and he gives the bible to the indian man and you know the the, he, the inca gets told that it, it holds the voice of god so he puts the book to his ear to hear it and then throws it at the floor because he can't hear anything. And they beat him to death over it. And I'm like, <laughs> you religious bastards. They were the savages. They were <laughs> the savages. I sh oh, God. Du weißt, mein Kind, für das Wohl unseres Herrn war die Kirche immer auf der Seite der Starken. Um, and so perhaps my most memorable and perhaps favourite and what I think is the funniest scene in the film is once they've been beached up to one of the sides and they need to push themselves free again, there's uh, one of the one of the conquistadors is stood on the side and this long arrow just flies out of nowhere and impales him. The long pfeile come in mode. Completely deadpan as he just falls into the water. But of course, in the in the dubbed version, he just goes, "Oh, I didn't think it would hurt as much," and then forces work. Just like either way, it's 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 funny. Brilliant! It's funny. <laughs> my my favorite scenes. I I have two. the The first scene I thought was really well done was the scene where uh, one of the Inca prisoners is talking to Aguirre's daughter, and he he basically tells her that he used to be a prince to a tribe. And the conquistadors came and completely destroyed his village and took him as a prisoner. And he explains that, you know, when he was a prince, people weren't allowed to look at him. And now he is a prisoner and he has to hold his head down. And it just, it, I just thought it was brilliantly acted, the, the way the guy delivered the lines. But at the same time, it actually held such a message of, you know, we go and conquer lands. These people have lived for generations with no troubles at all, apart from what they get into themselves. And then other people come along with guns and swords and completely destroy all of these things that have been built up. It's, it, it was absolutely brilliant. And my second favourite scene, it happens quite a few times, is the guy with the pan pipes. <laughs> I... <laughs> Every now and again, there is an Inca slave with a pair of pan pipes, and Aguirre every now and again goes, play us something nice. And you just see this guy go, <laughs> and it just completely uplifted me. I was just like, that's, that's brilliant. I love it. I've got to say, the first time I saw it happen, I was like, yeah, granted, okay. And when the second time it happened, and those pan pipes were playing for ages, <laughs> I was just starting to lose my freaking mind <laughs> because it, it I mean, I, I don't know specifically how that that instrument is meant to sound, but it sounds like he's missing notes or it just sounds like hollow notes. Yeah. It was just, it was just, it was driving me insane. And I was like, I'm feeling for a gear now. <laughs> I'm going insane too. But props to the actor that did that because he wasn't actually an actor. He was actually someone who suffered um, he had a mental handicap, right? And he was actually cast in that part, and he did a, he did the job. Yeah, <laughs> they they all of the actors in this film delivered uh, delivered brilliantly. I mean, especially uh, Gede's daughter. I don't yeah. think she delivers a single line in the film. I, I can't remember, but her presence, you know, why the hell you would take your daughter down the Amazon River? I I don't know, but just her presence on board. I'm just like. You know, this is this is what you are actually seeing. You know, people are losing their minds. They're getting bored. They are starving. They are hungry. You know, the conquistadors, all they see is gold. And she is just like, I, I don't care anymore. I just want to go home. When we jetzt umkehren, werden andere kommen. Und sie werden es schaffen. Und wir bleiben ein Nichts. 
Auch wenn dies Land nur aus Bäumen und Wasser besteht, wir werden es erobern. I, I'm gonna have to recommend Aguirre, The Wrath of God. I wasn't expecting to, but for film fans and film enthusiasts, you actually know who Werner Herzog is, who uh, Klaus Kinski is, and this was Werner Herzog's first film, yeah. and this launched his career and elevated sort of German filmmaking at the time as well. But even watching this film today, I was I was enthralled by it. I was completely engaged with the story. Yeah. And the story is relatively simple, and there's not exactly much character development, but the way that it's shot, the way that the, the music score holds it together, yeah. and the way you follow this trip into insanity is very, very engaging. And you you might predict where the film is going from the onset, but there's enough little vignettes and and side things that happen to the, this group along the way yeah. that just keeps it keeps the film going down this river if you will um and yeah a lot of the shots are overdrawn there are lots of scenes where there's no dialogue or you can't hear the dialogue yeah but if you stick with it you can be totally engrossed in this film from start to finish and so for lots of reasons even though like i said that is darkly funny in places whether you see that or don't you'll be entertained and enthralled by the film it's definitely a haunting masterpiece i i definitely recommend this as well i don't recommend this to to every movie watcher you know only to really dedicated fans of cinema this film has not everything but for an artistic film there are enough hooks in it to keep you going. Each one of the characters are, are memorable. I mean, Aguirre is absolutely brilliantly cast. You know, the, the Inca Indians and the looks on their faces are just haunting. The conquistadors themselves, I love the attention to detail in their armor and, and the cannons and, and the rafts. Just, just everything, even the look of the river and the jungle is just scary. So yeah, definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Ich bin der Zorn Gottes. Die Erde, über die ich gehe, sieht mich und bebt.